Good morning, folks. More than a day later, we have the comet. Still missing the latest images, but at least now we can see approach and the gigantic CME that erupted during its dive at the sun. I'll take this moment to nod again to the Earth-facing solar quiet effect as these big bursts are normal off the limbs and the far side. It's not very often we get one of these coming in Earth's direction, however. The comet did not survive, at least not in outburst form, and at least not in the images we've seen thus far. At spaceweathernews.com, we actually do see some Earth-facing features getting active. A pop and snap in the incoming sunspot groups heralded the growth of one grouping that destabilized a lot of them. Flashing indicates flare activity driving the movements, but we also do not see any major ejecta for CMEs. That would be easily seen in 304 angstroms. The X-ray chart shows the high-level sea flare events associated, still relatively moderate, and as we said before, a sunspot group growing quickly is responsible. That's it in the center of the bunch by longitude and a bit south of the rest. He's got Delta-class candidate stamped on his forehead with opposing polarity umbras and a scrum there. In the gamma spectrum, we had one burst come in this morning from Aquila, Looking at solar wind shows dropping off of intensity, but another stream is expected to impact Earth's magnetic field very soon. The first wave was from the now exiting coronal hole, but the last bulb of it just faced Earth two days ago and its stream will impact before the weekend. More storms are likely when it does. The only news from beneath our feet the last day came from Indonesia with more volcanic activity. It had one of the two OLR alerts from last night. The Global Quake Watch Index has been lower for 36 hours, and that's warranted at least until tonight. Top news includes a new Horizons Enlil for Pluto. The whole system, actually, gives you a great idea of how space weather is timed to the planets from the sun. And folks, first it was genetically modified salmon, and now it's chicken. In some ways, this isn't a problem. It's a free country, and you're welcome to eat whatever you want. But when the packaging will not allow me as a consumer to tell if the meat is GM or not, and my informed decision is stolen from me, then I have a big problem. England. What can I say? This is awful. And since I know you'll be thinking it in a moment, no, I'm not taking a piss when I say it's not over. And it won't be for a while. The pressure cells dominate right now and are driving every speck of available moisture in the North Atlantic right over top of the UK. Things are actually going to be even worse across the pond and over the river through the woods and over the Rockies as landslides are already being triggered. River banks are hopeless as the water level rises. It's an atmospheric river, folks, and it, too, isn't going to stop today. Folks, if you pre-ordered our book before it sold out, those are going to be sent out to you in the next three or four days. Round two of the pre-order is available for purchase now. Those won't ship out until the week after Saturnalia. And we do still have a couple of books left in that second shipment. You can find the book, hardcover, or electronic copy alongside all of the videos from our Pittsburgh conference, Observing the Frontier. Our next conference will be in January in Phoenix, and we've got just as many big-name scientists coming out as last time. I only got to shake about 3,000 of your hands when we were in the Mobile Observatory. Come on out and help us up that number. We've got your current conditions and shots of our star to close. It's 5.20 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.